Well, our coverage rolls on here in Dar es Salaam from Arusha. There, an interesting story by Mercy Kandi. And I'm joined, as you can see, by January Makamba. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. January Makamba is a member of the National Elections Commission, uh, Committee of the Chama Chama Pinduzi. Thank you very much for joining us no, once no, again. Now, um, if we've just concluded hearing the results from day one of uh, the, the vote count. Um, your assessments, I'm sure, are fairly positive about this. And we spoke about this sometime earlier. Um, John Magufuli seeming to win at a bigger constituencies. Edward Loasa, uh, his wins being restricted to smaller ones. Tell us, w w now that the election is over, in terms of strategy, how important were these big constituencies? No, very important. As you know, uh, Tanzanian population is growing very fast. And our settlement patterns uh, are changing. Uh, you know, urban centers attracting more young men, uh, but new cities, uh, you know, coming up and growing up. We have about nine uh, regions uh, that form 52% of the uh, voter uh, registration. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, new government has to deliver uh, for these people. Yeah. All right, new government having to deliver for these people, the networks of CCM having been around for many, many, many years. So it would seem, uh, especially for Chadema, that hasn't had as long a time to be able to grow its networks in Tanzania, that you had the upper hand um, allegations of the use of state resources, not CCM resources, in this campaign to get a leg over, um, to le get a leg over Chadema. Is this true? Uh, first of all, I want to contest uh, this idea that uh, uh, being uh, uh, there as a party that has been there for 50 years and the one that has been there for 23 years, that has to do with a victory. Uh, I think you are uh, discounting the hard work that we have done in this campaign and also you're discounting history that uh, in other countries, uh, parties that have been formed of a few couple of years have gone into in power mm -hmm. so that's one uh, but two as far as allegations are concerned it has become um, a habit uh, in our continent and I think this is something that we must address that every time uh, parties go into election uh, and a party or candidate loses uh, somehow there was a foul play uh, from the assessment of the observers uh, that we have been uh, we've started to read including uh, His Excellency Moody Awori, uh, who was here on behalf of the East African community, uh, shows that uh, all the conditions for a fair uh, election existed. Uh, obviously, you know, they, given the size of our country, given the terrain, uh, to organize such a logistical uh, effort as an election uh, would pose challenges. Uh, but from our perspective, um, the challenges that we faced uh, could not have tilted an election one way or the other. All right. All the, all the conditions uh, being there for a free and fair election, that, of course, being your perspective. But Edward Loasa would take a very, very different perspective, considering what he alleges happened today. Police going into his tallying centers, arresting 191 members of his team that were doing tallies um, for, for, the, for the election, trying to compare the figures there. That doesn't sound like um, something that would happen in, an, in a free and fair environment. What's your response as CCM? No, I have to be honest with you. I don't have details uh, of uh, what happened. Uh, I read it on social media, uh, the incident that you're talking about, and I was looking and scanning for a formal police uh, uh, statement, and it's yet to be out. So um, and I need to be able to see that uh, before we, uh, we make a statement and, mm -hmm. and uh, define what really happened. But uh, I mean, for us, uh, a tallying center and its functions uh, normally is after the vote has been cast. So whether the existence or non-existence of a tallying center will change the outcome that we see here, uh, that's doubtful. All right. If the outcome does change as we wind up, are you prepared as CCM to hand over power to, Chad to Chadema? You see, the way we organize our campaign um, since day one, uh, we've been preparing for this election for a long time. Uh, and the effort in terms of thought, in terms of um, uh, strategy, uh, we reached a point and the opposition actually helped us in appointing Mr. Loasa. Uh, that day, election was tilted on our side. 
So you know, we never thought, but, but we never not, comprehended, yeah. we never, uh, you know, for us imagined that we will be at a point where we lose this election. All right, but you're not answering the question there. If you, uh, if the lead changes here and it winds up in uh, Edward Loasa's favour, are you as CCM prepared to hand over leadership? No, I, to be frank, I don't want to answer a hypothetical question that, uh, from the uh, information that we have now you know, is really uh, uh, non-existent. All right. Yeah. I'll let you go there. We'll Thank ask you. this question again Thank tomorrow, January Makamba. Thank, Thank you very you. much for Pleasure. joining us Thank you. on KTN News. I'm sure we'll be talking again um, with respect to this election as the, as the results come in. Still early days yet, even though um, John Magufuli opening up quite a bit of a lead against Edward Loasa in the 27 constituencies who's